Greetings, fellow connoisseurs of semi-good four-cylinder Ford engines. <laughs> so this video is following up to my last video. And just like most things I do, I can never just like fully and clearly get the message I want out in one video. It spans a couple of videos. When I was recording that video, I did not have a clue why things were doing what they were doing, i.e why I was looking at the data logs, why I saw the tip boost sensor reading significantly higher than the manifold uh, map sensor. So I was, I was stumped, honestly, during the editing and production of said video. However, pretty much once I finished editing it and uploaded it and scheduled it for uh, upload, in that time after I scheduled it, I was doing more research and I pretty much stumbled across a thread on the HP Tuners forum that described exactly what is happening to my car and pretty much I think is what it is. I kind of try to correct myself in a comment on that video, a pinned comment I put on there. However, I don't know if any, many people read it or quite understood the comments. So this video is to clarify that and what I have found and what is going on with this. And I'm just going to tell you a lot of things I've been learning about these new S550 cars, the way they are controlled, the way they operate. It's kind of a taste of what we have to look forward to in the future because there's going to be a lot of learning when it comes to tuning these things. I've been uh, reading a lot on the HP Tuners forums about these Fords, watching a lot of videos, reading a lot of material about tuning these Fords because there's a lot of things I didn't know. Now I do know, so knowledge is power, right? Anywho, so in a nutshell, what was really happening is, you gotta remember there's two boost sensors, right? It's theoretically. You have this one here, which is in the manifold. This is the important one. This is the one that's really telling you how much boost is entering the engine. This is the one that you don't want to see any excessive boost pressure at. So if you have an overboost condition per se, and you see a lot of pressure up here, well, then that's bad. So uh, there's also another sensor down there in the uh, intercooler. That is the tip boost sensor. And that one is less important. However, it is equally important to make everything work because it has to work uh, basically together with this sensor for the system to work properly. So basically what happens is whatever that sensor reports it allows the car to have kind of a basis on how to control boost uh, with the throttle body because they used a throttle plate to control the boost pretty much. So if let's say 30 PSI's worth of boost coming in down there, that sensor's reading it, well the car is going to automatically start controlling the throttle body to get the right amount of boost. And then it's going to reference what's coming into the manifold with this sensor. So there's a delta, basically the difference between this sensor and that sensor that the car is constantly checking for in between. It's looking between both sensors on how much that one's reading, how much that one's reading, so it can tell the throttle plate how much to open and close to get the desired torque um, you know, that it wants, that it's programmed at. So with that, these cars have programmed torque limits. It calculates off the load of the engine multiple parameters. They know at X amount of RPM, X amount of load, X amount of um, boost, there's going to be an X amount of cylinder pressure, which is going to equal an X amount of torque production. This car knows how much power it wants to make and it ain't going to make any more power that it's programmed to make overall. All the mods I've kind of done here and there may have picked up some power here, a little bit there. But overall, the car is never going to make any more power than it's programmed to make. And what it does, if you do try making more power, like with a device like the Boost Max, or adding a wastegate actuator that's either tricking the car to make more boost or physically trying to make the car push more boost, this won't let you because these two sensors are going to read whatever is coming in and they're not going to allow it. The throttle plate is going to shut. It's going to close up as much as possible to limit 
that air coming in. So only momentarily will you ever see, you know, increased power, and I've experienced this. You know, you've seen my car, and you've seen what it's done, and like in my uh, quarter mile videos and stuff where I've gone, gone and run it, it like, has really good low end, but then it kind of like tapers off up top. And it, I've always complained, like it has, has no top and it dies up top. And it feels slow and sluggish, like it's pulling a boat anchor once you get past 70, 80 or so, and you're approaching triple digit speeds. I've always complained about that. The reason why that is, is because, you know, during the first few gear changes when you're taking off the car hasn't quite adjusted the boost there's too much load still but as the car kind of gets rolling and moving it realizes that it was making too much torque it starts pulling back it fights itself all the time honestly all the data logs show that now that i've looked at it and looked for it the data logs show that in all of the uh data logs that i have where the throttle plate is opening and closing to control how much air is going in and it will fight itself. So you might get momentary gains with torque and power, but then as the car kept accelerating, the car figured out, oh wait, you know, we finally got things more stabilized. We know where we're at. We know what we need, how much throttle the plate needs to be open to make the torque production. So then, you know, I might have 400 horsepower worth of power momentarily going through first, second, maybe third gear. But as I get up there in gears, I'm back down to pretty much what the car wants to make and what it was programmed to make, which is the stock 340, 350 pound feet of torque, you know, 330 horsepower. That is the biggest problem with these engines and these newer cars is you can't really trick them. With all of that said, that plays a big part into why this is having a problem with that fluttering or that boost control issue and the overboost condition is because since the boost max is on this car, since there is a waste gate on this car, now this new engine has camshafts and higher compression, it gets to its torque limit very quick, meaning it doesn't need as much to make the power the car was programmed to make from the factory. So with that said, the throttle plate stays closed. I mean, you know, it opens up like that. I think like, I think like that is the furthest it really opens, like 80 some degrees, something like that. It doesn't open a full 90, it opens like that, I think is the furthest you'll ever see it open. But I've noticed it's pretty much sitting like this. It is almost shut in the logs. I've looked at it and if the throttle angle is like that and you have a bunch of air coming from here, rushing in up through here and it's like that, it's hitting a brick wall, man. That air has pretty much nowhere to go. So what happens then? Well, all the air that gets built up in front of the throttle plate this way in this pipe here down in the intercooler and back over here, all that pressure gets built up uh, behind or in front of the throttle pl plate rather. And that's why the tip sensor down there is reading a higher boost pressure because there, there physically is. There is more pressure on this side of the throttle body because it's, of it being closed than there is on this side of the throttle body. So that's what happens. And the car does that because all the car wants is for this sensor to read the correct amount. That sensor is really only for the car to help calculate how much throttle angle is needed to reach target boost levels and then it double checks with this one. But remember how I said there's that delta or that difference between both sensors? Well, if the difference in that sensor is too far away from this sensor, that's when it knows something ain't right. That's when it throws an overboost code. I've talked with the engineer of the Boost Max about this, Chris Johnson. He mentioned that in the 2015 through 17 cars, they used to get away with being able to add a full five PSI of boost with the Boost Max um, to that car. But I think he said either in 2018 or 2019, one of those two years, Ford implemented a new uh, strategy for these engines um, to control them. And they, they basically added what's called a checksum. And that checksum is exactly what I just explained, where the car is monitoring the difference between that sensor and that sensor down there, tip sensor. And if things aren't right, and the values are too far off, it throws an overboost. And he said that's what was happening, which is why these newer, modern um, boost maxes for the newer cars are different. They have a different part number than the old ones, if you ever actually paid attention. And that's because they do not add as much to the newer cars 
two, three PSI extra max because you can't have too much of a difference between these two sensors or it will do exactly what the car is doing now. Except what it's doing now is not related to the boost max that I found out. It's just related to the fact that this engine is making more power or it can make more power with the same amount of air, but the, the computer doesn't know that. The computer doesn't know that this engine's different. The computer only knows what it's programmed. Therefore, the only thing that you can really do with this, now there's a, uh, you can adjust the limit. So there's like a tip sensor uh, limit. You can put it up the KPA value. You can put it all like right now. It's like 310, I think 311 maybe. KPA is where it kind of maxes out. And you, that usually equates to around 30, 31 PSI. Anything above that, the car is gonna think it's overboost. You can extend that value. That's one thing you can do. And once I get a tuning solution, I'll have to look into that. But I kinda, I still wanna keep that function in check where the car will still protect itself from an actual overboost condition. There's also t the, the torque limits, as I mentioned. Raising them up, they're basically parameters that you adjust. It's set up on a graph. If you ever did any tuning, you ever looked at any like um, fuel graphs or timing, the, you know how they have all the different load cells and stuff. It's set up like that, and each cell has a, depending on the load, each cell has a predefined amount of torque that the car is looking to make. You can adjust all that. And of course, this car is going to be able to make a shit ton more torque and power overall because it just it's set up now to do so so all those values have to be adjusted and then once there's a value is adjusted what you really want is the ideal situation is you want this throttle plate to be as open as possible while staying within all of your targets you don't want the car really trying to pull back as much power but you want to do all that and still stay within the limits you set that's the tuning and that's what has to be done to make sure that this is going to run good and I'm not gonna get any more power out of it until I do so. Which is why I switched gears on my original intentions because I was gonna kind of scrap flash tuning altogether and go to a JB4. The problem is the JB4 will run into the same issues and I started realizing that soon after. I've been kind of, you know, reading about this stuff for months now. The JB4 will just run into the same issues as the Boost Max where you're not going to exceed the pre-programmed torque limits of the car. So while the JB4 still offers some great features, and it still might be something I look into down the road because it offers features that you can't really program into the factory computer, i.e. boost by gear, it still offers great capability there. However, for it to do its job, it still has to have all those torque limits raised because the car won't make any more power. Like I said, you might get momentary spurts of that extra power until the car realizes that it ain't right and it'll start closing the throttle plate and taking all your power away. So that's why I've opted to do what I'm doing now and just take the tuning to my own hands with the you know, system of the HP tuners where I can go into the laptop, I can adjust all these parameters as I need to, as I see fit and make all this work. And that's the only way, because until then, this car will never make any more power. It will always be about as fast as it is. And yeah, and with this new setup, of course, I'm gonna have the issue I'm running into now. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of clear some of that up to hopefully, you know, spread some of the knowledge that I've learned on what it takes to kind of mess with these newer Fords. It was technically an overboost condition. It wasn't actually an overboost condition. It's only because the car is trying to limit its power and the throttle plate being closed is just backing all that pressure up in the intake pipe. The tip sensor's reading that pressure. The delta between the tip sensor and the map sensor is too much and it wigs the car out. The important part is the map sensor is not reading 30 PSI. So that's the important thing. And it, it's not, it's reading normal boost levels. So with that, I think I'm gonna finally wrap it up here for this video. Um, if you have any suggestions or thoughts about all of this, go ahead, throw it in the comments. But until then, it's gonna wrap it up here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for the next Cars Creative video.